Children, how are you all? That is good. Church is good. Oh, now we're going to... Um, wow, I'm a bit loud there. We're starting a new series today. We've finished Malachi and now we're starting a new series looking at another book of the Bible. This one is called One Peter. Now, what do you think we can guess about One Peter already by the name One Peter? I reckon there's two things we can gather from this name. Go, give me one. It was probably written by a guy called Peter. And what else could we gather from it? He's one year old. Well, maybe, maybe. That's a, that's a good estimate. I like that. I was going to say it probably means there's a sequel, but um, that's a good guess too. But Peter, who's Peter? Does anyone know who Peter is? Yes? He's a disciple of Jesus. Can I have the next slide, the slide up? Here's a photo of Jesus' 12 disciples there. A photo, not a photo. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think they had cameras back then. Um, but here's some drawings of the 12 disciples. And you'll see up the top on the left-hand side, the name Simon Peter. There he is there. And do you see who's next to him? What's his name? Andrew. Do you know that was his brother? Yeah, they are brothers. And Peter's got two names there, Simon and Peter. Do you know his name was Simon? And Jesus said, we're going to call you Peter. Do you know what Peter means? Does anyone know what Peter means? Because names are really important. We learned that through Malachi. Names are really important. Peter means rock. Rock. Now, let's talk a bit more about Peter. What did Peter do? Does anyone know what Peter did or, or any sort of stories around Peter from the New Testament? Do you know any? Nope. Nope. Anyone? Do you know one? No. No? Oh, wait, look at this. We've got another one over here. Yes, what do you reckon? Oh, yeah. He denied Jesus three times in a row. That's right. That's a good one. Hold on to that one. And there's another one that's sort of similar to that where Peter's like, yeah, I'm going to follow Jesus and then goes, oh, no, I don't. And does anyone know this one? No? Okay, let me tell you about this one. So Jesus is walking on the water towards the boat and Peter sees him. Jesus says, come out, walk towards me. And Peter starts doing it. And then he gets real worried and he starts sinking. Oh my goodness, this guy, this guy's pretty doubtful, isn't he? Now, we're going to listen to a letter written by this guy. Do you know that he had a massive change? And, he, and it says in the first few verses of his letter that he has a living hope. What is it? A living hope. Now, do you think that is hope like, gee, I hope we get KFC for lunch today? No, it's not like that. Or, gee, I hope the Raiders win the premiership this year. Or, yeah, I hope that I get money or chocolate right now. I forgot to line someone up to bring me chocolate. Well, that's not, it doesn't happen, does it? But this hope is something that is certain. He knows it's true and it's a good thing that he knows is certain and true. And this hope is because Jesus died and came back again. He rose from the dead. So we can have hope too. And he writes to encourage us. We can have true living hope because Jesus has risen from the dead. Is that a good thing? Yes, it's a great thing. So I'm going to pray for that now and then we're going to grab our kid sheets, cool? Okay. Dear Lord, thank you so much that you love us, that you sent Jesus to die and to rise again and that we can have a true and living hope because of him. In his name we pray, amen.